So, Lone Rider here, and I just wanted to throw out here, these are uh, several possible uh, hilt options when you're uh, trying to outfit a small sword for uh, historical swordsmanship practice. Um, these are all homemade hilts, uh, except for the top one. I'll get to that in a second. That's only partly homemade. And they're all based around junior epi blades. Um, most of these are uh, zero, uh, number zero epi blades. Uh, this one is a number two, which is a little bit longer. Uh, the size zero is 30 inch, the number two is uh, 32 inches. And of course, an adult heavy blade is a lot longer, something in the neighborhood of uh, 35. But historically, a small sword was usually around uh, 30 or 32 inches long, so um, adult heavy blades tend to be too too long for that. And also, the longer a blade gets, uh, it gets a little floppy. Uh, you want your blade to be, you know, um, uh, strong enough that you can use it in the bind that it's not just going to bend and, and, and flop all over the place. So we have three options here for homemade hilts and one for uh, store-bought hilt. Let me get the store-bought one out of the way. This is the easiest thing to do. Get an epi blade, get a small uh, foil guard, and put them all together with some kind of a grip and pommel. Uh, whether it's a homemade grip, as in this case, with finger rings and um, quillions, or whether it's just the, the actual grip from the fencing store. What you could do is just get the, the epi blade, the foil guard, and the, the grip, let's say a French grip, for example, the synthetic or rubber French grip that comes from the fencing store. And this entire thing could have been uh, store-bought. But I wanted to have a uh, more, you know, old-school look, so I included finger rings and quillions. Now, because the finger rings and quillions are mostly protected by this guard, they're made out of aluminum bar stock, so... You know, they're not all that strong, but they're not going to take any direct hits because they're under this uh, foil guard. And then you have an oak grip. Uh, the three uh, homemade hilts all have um, knuckle bows, uh, but that's where the similarity ends. Uh, these are, again, all on epi blades as well. This is a single shell guard. And uh, so you've got a large uh, ovoid or oval shell, metal bolster. Uh, incomplete finger rings. They are big enough to get a finger through, although probably not with a glove. Uh, that said, historically, a lot of people didn't use the finger rings. A lot of them just held it like this. Uh, so you have incomplete finger rings, and then a knuckle bow and a wood grip. Here you have a bilobate or double shell guard. Uh, so you have two shells. I mean, it's, it's one piece, but the, uh, the shells, you know, it's clearly split, and they're actually canted, one to each side. Uh, you have full finger rings, uh, which these can be actually used with a glove, depending on the thickness of the glove. Uh, metal bolster here, knuckle bow, oak grip. This one's spiraled also for texture. And then you have your strong rock pommel. Now here you have the last of the fully homemade hilts. And this is a, this really isn't a small sword hilt per se. This is more of a court sword hilt. Uh, but since the court sword is essentially a variant of the small sword, I don't, I don't think it's inappropriate to have this. This is a single downturned shell guard on the knuckle side of the hand, so this is clearly for lefties only. Uh, then you have a knuckle bow. The knuckle bow in this case isn't connected, uh, but just bends around. Uh, and then you have the pommel. This pommel looks a little bit different because this was a uh, sort of a scent stopper pommel. Uh, it was a longer one with um, flat sides, and it was too long for the type of sword, so I cut the pommel off, leaving just enough of the flats that you can get a wrench on there to tighten it. And there's a washer down there. This also has an oak grip, uh, but it's actually a square. It's a very squared off oak grip. All these grips are flattened on the sides, but this one is the most squared off of all if you look at the, uh, the cross section there. So those are several options for uh, homemade hilts for small sword. Uh, mostly it's just a style thing. They're all going to be pretty much as functional. Uh, but, you know, the idea is to have some kind of a, a shell or a guard protecting the hand. Uh, the finger rings provide a place to, to rest your finger against if you're going to hold it like that. Uh, and then a knuckle bow just to, you know, prevent your knuckles from getting dinged up. Like I said, you could just use a fencing blade, uh, you know, a shortened epi, for example, or shorter epi, with just, the, with just this kind of a guard and not bother with anything homemade. Uh, that will work for many people, but it won't look as historical. I think you'd agree that this has a touch of the old and the new with the discard, but also having finger rings and quillions. However, hilts like this very much do look more like a small sword should look. And um, 
you know, this is the type of thing. We're not doing modern spore fencing. We're doing historical fencing. So uh, since we're doing Hema instead of modern Epe, uh, it'd be nice if it looked like a small sword. And that's what this uh, hopefully does. Uh, in addition to being a little more durable because uh, all of these are made of steel bar stock and they're fairly heavy. The knuckle bow on this is a lot lighter. Uh, it's, it's thinner than the material on the knuckle bows of the other two. But even there, it's steel and it's fairly, fairly sturdy. So uh, there you go. Uh, Lone Rider out. And that's uh, several possibilities for homemade small sword hilts.